webinar is proudly brought to you by IG South Africa. Visit igmarkets.co.za to open your trading account today. Today we're going to be looking at contracts for difference, CFDs. In truth, a very, very simple product. Um, we'll go through it in a fair bit of detail. We've certainly got time for questions. If you've got questions, drop them into the Q&A box as they pop up. If they're relevant and, and need to be answered immediately, I will tackle them at that point. Uh, if they can hold for uh, end of the presentation, we will obviously leave time for questions then as well. We're looking at 30 minutes. If we overrun, I'm not overly stressed by it. Uh, certainly, if you haven't got any major time commitments, but the, the presentation will be done within the time frame. The balance will just be for Q&A. So an important upfront point, you're trading a derivative, uh, a CFD in this case, and it does mean that you can lose more money than you start with. This is a, a critically important disclaimer. If you trade shares, if you trade options, uh, the amount of money you put down is your absolute risk. In this case, you can lose more. And we'll show you a fully practical example um, and, 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 and look into it uh, and, and, and explain how that works and what it does in that sense. But certainly, there is risk here and risk then more than just the money that you put in. So CFD is an unlisted instrument. It trades over the counter. I'm going to come back to that in more in a, in a moment. What it does mean is it's not a JSE listed instrument, such as single stock futures, equities, warrants, and the like. So that's an important point. It only requires a deposit. We call it a good faith deposit. Uh, we call it a margin. Margin is a term we will come to most often. We'll come back to it in more detail. But what in essence it means if you're taking, for example, 15,000 Rand exposure, your margin requirement would only be around 1,500 Rand. They are geared products. In a nutshell, that means that if the share that you've got a CFD on moves, say, 4%, your profit on your margin would be 40%. And that depends on what, that, on what the gearing is, but you certainly, you're amplifying the move. You make profit faster, and of course, you make losses faster. It works both directions, and that's an, that, that both direction is important. You, you profit quicker, and of course, you lose money quicker if the trade is going against you. Trades at spot price of asset, and that's part of the simplicity of it. Uh, because this isn't a futures contract where there's interest and dividend assumptions and all of that built in, so you've got a spot price and then a futures price, and they're different. The CFD is going to trade at that spot price. Whatever that spot price might be, you see the, the underlying asset. Say you're looking at, I don't know, NASPASS, trading at 830 Rand, you will trade the CFD at that same price. Of course, there are costs and the like associated, and we'll touch on those in a moment. No expiry date. This is massively important, but it is important that you know about it. And, and the key point being is that most derivative products, futures, options and the like, they have an expiry date. And at expiry, the contract you're in is now closed. You now need to enter a new contract, new set of costs and the like, whereas with the CFD, there's no expiry date. They continue in perpetuity forever until such time as you close the position. Simple product in that they are one for one ratio, again with a lot of other leveraged products. They've got cover ratios with warrants, uh, they've got contract ratios with futures and the like. Here, yeah, one CFD, one of the underlying, be that a barrel of oil, be it an index, uh, be it whatever, it's that nice simple relationship. Profit and loss on a daily basis, so it's profit coming in or loss going out of your account on a daily basis. So as opposed to the share, when you want to realize your profit, you need to sell the share. Here, it is coming in real time. Short trading. Short trading is a huge benefit of derivative trading. What it means is you can make money on the downside. So in a falling market, share, equity, currency, whatever it might be, if it is falling, you can still make a profit. And we'll go into that in more detail as well. There is a daily interest that is paid or received. I'm not going to touch on that now. We'll come back to that because it's important that you understand how that works. And it is a low-cost instrument. And if we're trading, costs are critically important. We want them as low as possible because if we're trading, you know, it, it's those margins. It's that percent here and 2% there that add up. And if you're trading, therefore, you want a cheap product to trade, cheap in terms of, of cost of transaction, cheap in terms of interest and the like. 
so that you can keep the associated fees as low as possible. And of course, we'll come to that in more detail as well. So let's go back to that counterparty risk, which I mentioned up front. CFDs are traded what we call over the counter. They are not listed on the JSC or any other exchange around the world. Yes, the asset underlying the CFD may well be listed on another exchange. In fact, it certainly is going to be listed on another exchange, but the CFD is not. Now the purpose, if, it's, if you're trading something that's listed on an exchange, you get levels of protection offered by that exchange. Different exchanges, different levels of protection, but the point is you get that level of protection. So here you take counterparty risk. What's important it means is that you take risk against whoever issues the CFD to you. Not against in the sense that you make money, they lose money, but against in the sense that if they go into liquidation or something, then you've got a problem. So the question you have to ask yourself, and you need to go and do the homework, is who is this counterparty? And locally in South Africa, who are the, the big CFD houses? Uh, it's IG Markets, it's Standard Bank, uh, it's PSG, I think Nedbank still offers in that space. So it certainly is the large financial institutions. You want to go and trade the CFD with some, some, some counterparty you met late one Saturday night after a concert. And you can't quite remember their name. You don't know where their offices are. These are listed companies. You can go and check out their balance sheets. You can see the strength of the organization. That's important. The reality is that they are hedging in the spot market. So there are two points we need to look at here. That yes, you take the counterparty risk, but you're trading that equity, that commodity, whatever it might be. It also means that they're going and hedging. You're not trading against the counterparty. It's not a case of if you make money, they lose. Or if you lose money, they make money. They hedge the position. You take a position, they go and hedge it. What that means is there has to be the liquidity in that underlying asset for you to trade. If you want to buy 10,000 mass at 830 Rand, and there are no sellers at 830 Rand, you simply can't enter the trade. If there are 5,000 sellers at 831 Rand, well then you go and change your price to 831 and you can trade 5,000 of the 10,000 shares. And that applies both when entering and exiting a share. So liquidity is important. You can only trade at the price that is available in the underlying market. What is therefore equally important is to understand that you don't want to trade the very low liquid product. Now as a rule, the, the CFD providers in South Africa are not offering you CFDs on the very, very low liquid shares. They're offering CFDs on about 100, maybe 130 or 140 of the top shares in terms of liquidity. They're not taking your view and saying they're good shares or bad shares. They're simply saying these shares have liquidity. Margin. This is a, a very important part of you know, derivative trading in CFDs. It is ultimately a good faith deposit. And that's the money that you put down. Because how it works is it's based on the full value of the position. So if you went and bought a position, took a CFT position of 1,000 shares at 15 Rand per share, that exposure is 15,000 Rand. And your margin will be based on that value. Now, if you go into more detail on it, it's, de it's determined by that counterparty. They will decide how much margin they want per share. And it is subject to change. They can, at times, increase or decrease that margin as they say fit, see fit. It's also subject to exposure levels. Some of the CFD houses say that as your exposure increases, so the margin will change. In other words, if you only buy 1,000 shares, there's a certain level of margin. But if you want to buy 2,000, there's another level of margin. Now, usually, the numbers are not one or 2,000. I suppose it depends on the price of the share, but if you start taking significantly larger positions, there may be different margin requirements. Check with your CFD provider for how they determine that. And the purpose behind margin is, is to try and, and, and be sufficient cash that sits and in essence is going to say, this is what kind of, if things go, if the, share, if the position goes against you, this is what you're probably going to lose. You can certainly lose more. But they're trying to say, what is that one-day volatility in a sense? And that's what they're trying to do. It's not a perfect science, not by any stretch of your imagination. That is an important point. So let's look at an example of margin. 
You're taking a position at 1,000 shares at 15 rand a share. Your exposure is 15,000 rand. 1,000 shares, 15 rand each. What's critically important, that is your ultimate risk. If that share goes to zero, you have lost 15,000 rand. Your margin is not your risk. It's a good faith deposit. That exposure, that 15,000 in this example, that is very much your risk. That's an important point we understand. We can manage the risk. You buy the share at 15 rand, it falls to 14, you close the position. You get out of the CFD, you limit your loss. But that is ultimately your ultimate risk. So margin, in this case I'm saying the margin has been set at 150 cents, around 50 per share. So you took a thousand CFDs, your margin is therefore 1,500 rand. Thousand CFDs, margin, one rand 50, it's 1,500. Question coming in, is the margin different for different shares? Absolutely. Based on the price of the share, so NASPAS at 830 Rand is going to have a different margin level per share to first Rand trading at around 30 Rand. So it's based on volatility and price of share. So what we get here is your margin and then from there we get our gearing. I said that amplification of the move. In this case, how do you determine the gearing? Gearing simple. The exposure and into that we divide the margin. So here we had 15,000 Rand exposure, margin 1,500. So we divide 15,000 by 1,500, we get gearing of 10. So for every 1% move in the share price, you will make or lose 10% on your margin. And that gearing is dynamic. And what I mean by being dynamic in the sense that obviously the margin can change from time to time, but it doesn't change that frequently. Whereas the share price is changing minute by minute. As that share price goes to 15 rand 50, your exposure has increased and therefore the amount, your, your gearing has equally increased. Only by a little bit, but nonetheless it has increased. Extreme example, that share went to 16 rand 50, a 10% move. Your gearing has gone from 10 to 11. So gearing is dynamic. And that's going to depend on the margin if it changes infrequently, the share price as it changes much more frequently. Uh, Simon's asking if there is stop loss facility. Uh, short answer, if your broker doesn't offer stop loss facility, I wouldn't trade with them. They're all going to offer stop loss. Some will offer a guaranteed stop loss. That would cost you a slight premium depending on product and the like. Others will certainly offer an ability that when a certain price point is reached, your position is automatically sent to market. Not a guarantee, sent to market to trade. So certainly you have to have a stop loss in the position and as I said, some will offer you a guaranteed stop loss. Margin call. This is the bane of any trader's life. When your account goes into negative, your broker will phone you, email you, SMS you, depending what the communication channel is, and request more money. Go into negative. In other words, not that you have lost money. If you go back to this trade, not that the trade has gone against you, but that the cash balance left in your account has gone into negative. And if that happens, you get margin call and you need to deposit more money or close some of or all of the position. When I say some of, well, if you close half the position, that frees up margin that puts cash into your account. Does the margin earn interest? Yes, it does earn interest. I'm going to come to more details on the interest in a moment, but certainly it does earn interest. So here's an example. We're going back to our 1,000 CFDs that we have purchased on a share, and that share has a spot price of 15 Rand. So on day one, you open the position. Your exposure is simply 15,000 Rand. It's 1,000 CFDs, 1,000 shares at 15 Rand gives you a 15,000 exposure. Your margin requirement is 1,500 Rand. So on day one, you open the position, you have 1,500 Rand that you put down as margin, and your exposure is that 15,000. The important point with the exposure is that your profit or loss is going to be determined on that 15,000. As the value increases, you'll be making a profit, and as the value decreases, you'll be making a loss. But it's based on that 15,000. So let's say we've got a crazy volatile share, and on day two, it's gone up 10%. That 10% adds 1,500 to the value of the shares, means that your exposure, those shares are now 16,500 Rand. 
Your margin remains the same, but your profit is that extra 1,500. That is your profit. The value of the shares went from 15,000 to 16,500, or 15 rand to 16 rand 50, same difference. You've made a buck 50 a share, you've got 1,000 CFDs on that share, you've made 1,500 rand. It's exactly the same profit you would have made if you owned the share. The important point is here you only put a margin down of 1,500 rand. So you've made the same 1,500 and 1,500, exactly the same. Difference is if you bought the shares, you'd paid 15,000 rand and therefore your profit is 10%. Here, because you bought the CFD, you paid 1,500 margin, your profit is 100%. You've doubled your money on a 10% move. That is your gearing. But then let's go forward to day two. Sorry, day three. Very volatile share. Day three, it loses 20%. So the value goes from 16,500 Rand or uh, 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 16 Rand 50 per share and it drops to 1320 a share, 13,200. So your decline has been 3,300 Rand. That's how much you've lost on that particular transaction. Now, again, if you were trading the share, if we go down to the bottom, you've lost 3,300 Rand, you've lost yourself 20%. Exactly what the move is. But if you were trading the CFD, you've still lost 3,300 Rand, but on your 1,500 margin, your actual loss is 220%. You've actually lost more than you started with. You put 1,500 margin in, and you've lost 3,300. You are 1,800 in the hole. Now, if you had 1,800 lying free in your account, no problem, that money would have then been swallowed up by this losing position. If you didn't have that much cash in your account, you would have gone into the margin call. So this is a very simple but very stark realization of, of how that process works. The person on the CFD versus the person who took a share are making or losing exactly the same amount of money. The key difference is you paid different amounts. The person paid 15000 for the share. For the CFD, you only paid 1500 what we can also see is the change in gearing. At this point here on day two, now when you open, let's go back to the open, your gearing is nice and simple. It's 10. 1,500 divided into 15,000 is 10. But on day two, it's still 1,500, but you're dividing it into 16,500. Your gearing had gone up to 11 times. That's supposed to be in 11 times. I know my, my artwork is not brilliant. At this point here, your gearing has now come down onto day three. Because what have we got? We've got a 13,200. We divide that by our margin requirement and we get a gearing of 8.8. .8. A question coming through. I can't see the name. I can. It's Jill asking, is it better to close positions daily or hold for longer? That really is a factor of your trading technique. And, and that's equivalent. Whatever you're trading, some folks are going to say, be a day trader. In other words, no open positions overnight. At the end of the trading day, you have zero positions, you're 100% cash. And it depends how much, what you're trading. If you're trading something that's doing only small moves, uh, you know, you might not be making sufficient profit in one single day. Certainly, I'm agnostic. I, I have traded uh, day trading before. Uh, these days, I do all of my trading on either daily or weekly charts, and I'm taking positions that can run for weeks, sometimes perhaps even months. Uh, David asked uh, single stock futures versus CFDs. Um, I haven't got a slide in it, but let me touch on it. I haven't got a slide because I, I, I hate comparing because then there's one better, there's one worse. So what are the key differences? Uh, key difference, single stock futures are exchange traded, suffix, that gives you, so it removes the counterparty risk from the CFD. CFDs are typically uh, cheaper to transact in uh, and in many cases simpler to transact in because you, a single stock futures got that, that future price, which is the share price, less the dividends, plus the interest. So it's a synthetic price, and it, it's not always 100% certain as to exactly what you're paying in terms of interest and the like. So CFD, a simpler product, and certainly for me, the preferred product, proviso, as long as you've got a, de a decent counterparty. 
So here's a great question. Can you use CFDs for, uh, Warren, I'm going to come back to your question. It, it's a great question, but I want to park it because it, it deserves a long answer. So, so let's look at that uh, when we've got some time at the end of the presentation. So let's go back on, on that slide there. Any, any, any questions coming through on, on this process here? This is really the, 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 the crux of, of trading a, a CFD um, and, and the CFD versus trading the direct equity. The extra risk when it goes wrong, the extra reward when it goes right. Cool. I'm not seeing any questions coming through, so I'll move on to the next slide. Shorting. One of the... Ah, so here's a question. Uh, can a margin call... Is a margin call uh, done at end of day only? Louise, that depends on your, on your broker that you're using. Some brokers will do them during the course of the day, so they do them live in real time. Other brokers will do them at the end of the day, and you'll get the margin call the following morning, assuming that's a trading day, no, mar no margin calls on Saturdays. So that's going to depend on the broker that you're using. Uh, if that's an important distinction for you, then uh, check with your broker and, and find one that meets how you want to run it. Shorting, making money on the downside. Markets mostly go up. Most of the time, markets are going up, more often than when they're going down. The point is, they do go down. We all saw what happened in 2008, 2009. That was a massive down. That was 50% down. But even within that, certain stocks are in downtrends and other stocks are in uptrends. So you want to be able to make money in both directions. You want to make money when it's rising. You want to make money when it's falling. That's part of the joy of being a trader. So CFDs allow you to make money on the downside. In essence, what you do is you sell what you do not own. As it falls, you make a profit. So I would, for example, sell, uh, if I thought the price of Lamborghinis was going to collapse, I would borrow my, my neighbor's Lamborghini because they're on holiday in the Mediterranean so they don't need it. I would borrow it. I would sell it to someone for, say, a million rand. The price of Lamborghinis falls to, say, 750,000. I then buy a Lamborghini back, I've made that 250,000 profit, I sold at a million, I bought it back at 750,000, 250,000 profit, and I returned the Lamborghini to my neighbor's garage before they back from the Mediterranean holiday. A lot of problems with that, my neighbor would probably notice, but do you get the point? I've sold something I don't own, and then return it. So you sell to open a short position, that could give you a negative holding and then you buy to close the short position. So what we're seeing here is that ability, if you think something is going to be falling, if you're looking at a share at 120 Rand and your technical analysis or whatever your methodology is says this share is going lower, well then what do you do? You sell it. And it falls to 100, you buy it back, and you've made that 20 Rand profit. The point with shorting is theoretically you have unlimited risk. Because say you're at the share at 120 and you sell it, thinking it's going to go lower, it could go to what price? 140, 200, 1,000, 10,000, million, 768 trillion. Okay, getting extreme, but you get the picture. When you're long, your loss is limited, share goes to zero. Your loss is more than your margin, but it still has a finite amount. Theoretically, in shorting, you have an infinite potential loss. Now, you know, no stock's going to trillions, and you've got lots of time to action your stop loss. Interest rates, you're going to charge interest, and there are a couple of, of, of points here. You pay uh, interest daily, you receive on your margin, so your margin is earning you interest. You also receive on your exposure if you are short, because you sold those shares and there was a positive cash flow. You sold it, money was received. You don't get the money, but you earn the interest on it. Your broker will hold the cash. You earn the interest. A couple of folks are asking what rate that you get. Uh, it's going to depend on, on, on the various different issuers, but it's, it's, it's depending whether it's being received or paid, whether it's margin or exposure, you're getting a rate of somewhere around about 4 to 7% in the current environment. That's an annual rate obviously being paid daily. Don't for a moment think that interest is going to make you money. This is not going to offset losses. And then you pay interest if you are long, because let's go back to that example of 15,000 rand. You took a position worth 15,000. Your broker hedged the position. In other words, they went and bought 
15,000 rands worth of shares. They needed that 15,000 rand. You didn't give it to them, so they charge you interest on the 15,000. So if you're long, you pay interest on the exposure and you receive interest on the margin. If you are short, you receive interest on the margin and you receive interest on the exposure. And what we're seeing here is the different, the different uh, brokers will offer different interest rates. I'm going to say, and maybe I'm wrong on this, but I'm going to say that those differences are tiny. That they really, really are small. Um, and, and yes, it's important. You need to know what rate you're paying. Check that with your broker. If it looks completely out of kilter with the other offerings, then question as to why. But really, those differences are very, very small. Costs, so obviously there's the interest cost, we've talked about that. There is a transaction fee, that is obviously applicable. That transaction fee is on the value of the exposure. So on that 15,000 Rand, not on the margin of 1,500. And then there is a lending fee if you go short, because what's happened is they've had to borrow the shares. Now an example of my neighbor's Lamborghini, I might have had to say to my neighbor, look, here's a bottle of whiskey so that I can borrow your Lamborghini so that I can go and sell it. That's the cost. The whiskey is the cost. Now, the different brokers do it differently. Some of them will build it into their pricing model. In other words, they will reduce the interest. Some of them will charge you on a daily basis. The lending fee is tiny. It's fractions of a percent. Again, not massively significant, but you will be seeing it in your account. Dividends. If you are long and you own the share, you will receive a dividend. If you are short of the share, you will have to pay the dividend. In essence, it's a net net. You don't win or lose in a perfect world. There's no arbitrage. What I mean by that? Let's say we go back to our 15 Rand share. Let's say it's paying a 1 Rand dividend. So on the last day to trade, let's say that's today, the share is 15 Rand. Tomorrow, all things equal, it opens at 14 Rand. 15 less the 1 Rand dividend. So you've lost a Rand, but you receive the dividend plus 1 Rand. So net net, you are flat. And the inverse if you are short. You were short at 15 Rand, it fell to 14, you've made 1 Rand profit on the price move, but you've paid 1 Rand for the dividend. So you net net flat. The truth is that sometimes the stock will move by more than a dividend, fall by more than a dividend, sometimes it will fall less than a dividend. But the dividend is no arbitrage. I tried that, I thought it was a clever way to make money many, many moons ago, doesn't work. So let's look at some trading tips for CFDs. They are trading instruments. That's critically important. Uh, Warren, your question around can they be used for, CF, for, for investing? The short answer is yes. Of course they can be used for investing. Here's the longer answer. There are two parts to it. Firstly, you're going to have that interest bill. Now at the moment, interest rates are fairly low, so the interest is not massively significant. But certainly you're going to have that interest. Let's call it 7% per year on the exposure level. So you need the share to do at least 7% to offset your interest. But then the problem comes if we hit a sudden wobbly patch, and it depends on your style of investing. If you're doing what I call shorter term investing, you're looking to buy a sector when it's downbeat and sell it a year or three later when it's done very, very well, that kind of works. But if you're looking to really do long term buy and hold style investing. And I'm going to use my shop rights as an example. I've been buying shop rights for about almost 10 years now. Beginning of this year, they traded north of 200 Rand, um, sitting very pretty. Huge profits in the trade, in, in the position. It's an investment. And then for 260, they're down 20%. Now, it's a long-term investment. I'm not focusing on price. And that 20% fall is it's not fun, but it's a share. It hasn't cost me anything, and I have no doubt that in the next couple of years, at some point, one year, five years' time, ShopRite will be well above 200 grand. I'm a long-term investor. If anything, I'm focusing on dividends. If you had a CFD, that fall could make margin calls. So that comes into the risk. When I've run the numbers, and I've looked at this as an experiment, broadly, I say that if you want to trade, uh, if you want to invest with CFDs, you want gearing levels of only around two or maybe three. So you actually want to pay as much as probably somewhere between 35 and 50% of the, of the exposure, whereas the margin is probably significantly lower, closer to around 10%. So check to your CFP provider. There's ways to do it. 
So let's do an example. You're taking 100,000 Rand exposure. The CFD provider only wants 10,000. You want to pay 50. We'll put the other 40,000 in the account. It sits there as your buffer. So it's a long answer to a short question. Can you use CFDs for investing? I'm not 100% convinced, but certainly I know people who do. There are risks, but as everything, there are rewards. Keep extra cash in your account. Don't keep all your extra cash in the account. If you've got a million rand under your bed, don't throw that into your account. But what I'm saying, in the earlier example, where you did a trade, your margin was 15, uh, was 1,500 rand. Don't max it out so you've now got only 10 cents left in your account. Have some money left over so that if it initially goes against you, you've got some wiggle room before you move into, into auto closeout. So always have a little bit of cash left over in your account. And monitor your position. This is trading. I, I know it's not for standing the, the, my answer to Warren's question, but this is trading. Monitor your position. Have a system where you do it. Maybe there's an online app, uh, an iPad app or something, and you're monitoring it via that. Maybe you're getting SMS alerts to you. Maybe you've got an app on your phone. Maybe you're in front of your desk. But monitor your position. Have a regime for monitoring. Do you need to check the price every minute? Probably not. Every hour? Maybe. It depends what you're trading, how you're trading, you know, day trading, trading longer time frames. But certainly you need to monitor the, quest, the, the position. And you need risk management. We are trading. Cornerstone of trading is risk management. Risk management is your 2% rule. And if you go to that link there, jol.to slash question mark 4j, or just go to justonelap.com, search for 2%, you will find that you are trading, uh, you will find the, the, the theories around the 2% rule. 2% rule limits your risk per transaction. It's critically important. Risk management is the first portal call of trade. Part of that risk management is stop loss. You always have to have a stop loss. I'm going to be doing some more webinars later in the month on stop loss. There are more in the library at just one lap. The stop loss says quite simply, if I start to lose money at a certain point, I close the position, end of story. And discipline. Cornerstone of trading is discipline. If you haven't got the discipline to follow the rules, the rules that you have imposed, the rules around your system, you will bust out. You have to have discipline, and that discipline obviously goes to many things, but critically, stop loss and risk management as well. Folks, I'm seeing questions flying in. I'm going to hold on to them. Uh, I'll come to them in a minute. Your risks, market risk, of course, whatever it is you're trading. That gearing is a risk because you make your profits faster, but you make your losses faster. And counterparty is a risk. I, Check you, it, it depends who you're trading against. I don't think, I mean, with the big CFD providers in South Africa, uh, I don't think the counterparty is a, is a significant risk we need to massively worry about. But as I said, don't go and find some really dodgy counterparty that you found off to the rock concert and late at night on a Saturday and you can't remember their name. Uh, folks are saying, uh, so a couple of questions coming through about counterparty. Uh, is it safe with IG? They're a FTSE, a FTSE uh, a LSE, so a London Stock Exchange listed company. Um, I'm comfortable. They're a sponsor of this webcast. I'm comfortable with them. Um, other folks are saying, do I have a preference to a CFD provider? I'm not going to give a preference. There are a couple out there. Uh, go and do your homework. Um, as I said, full disclaimer, IG Markets is a sponsor of both Just One Lap and of this uh, particular webcast that we're looking at right now. Quick recap, simple product, offers gearing, critically important. You can go long or short, make money rising or falling, which is great for traders. It's a cheap product. And I don't mean cheap by cheap and nasty, I mean cheap by costs. And costs as a trade, costs are always important. We always want to pay less. Of course we do. But we have to pay something. So let's see what those costs are and let's find the best costs. And risk. There is risk in trading. There's no getting around that. Make sure you understand and are happy with that risk. Van's asking, you mentioned high volatility. Where can we or how can we find shares that have high volatility? Great question. Um, I don't know of, of any website that publishes a list. Uh, I, I certainly, what I've done in the past in my Emmy Broker software, um, I've just looked for, for, for uh, uh, percentage moves. There is also a volatility indicator which will give you the indication, and you could go and do a scan and say, show me those with volatility above X, and that would give you a level and tell you, you know, of, of which are the most volatile 
or say the top 100 shares or something listed on the JSC. Um, how much is a little bit of cash to leave in your account, Shane? I do. Uh, great question. So what I'm typically doing is is I'm keeping probably about uh, 10, maybe 15 percent of the cash of my account as cash at all points for margin calls. Um, that's critically important. So I'm always keeping some cash there. Uh, who offers good demo accounts for CFDs in South Africa? Um, it, it, most of the providers do, uh, and it depends uh, how you mean by, by demo, um, but certainly my advice is typically is sign up with one or two of the different platforms, maybe three of them, and try them out. Have a look, see, see what their charting applications are, see what the, how it works, see what works for you, um, rather than just brushing off and saying I'm going to do one or the other. Try a couple. Um, some of them certainly have got better charting. IG's got really good charting. Um, and of course, there are other issues you want to look at as well. Price is an important point as well. Uh, let me scroll my questions up. Uh, question from Donald. On average, if you bought, say, a million on Citrix 40 CFD and the market grew 20% for the year, what amount of the growth would go to interest costs for the same period being one year? Donald, great question. So you took a million rand and it went up 20%. So you've made 200,000 rand profit on that position. Broadly, your interest that you would pay on the exposure would probably be in the order of around 7 or 8%. So therefore, 70 or 80,000 rand. So in that example, you've made a profit. Of course, if the market only went up 5%, you've made 50,000 on the position. However, you've probably paid more in interest. So if you're getting, in the current interest rate environment, double-digit returns, then you're ahead of the game. Single-digit returns, you are behind the curve. Uh, the spread between buy and sell, question coming from Andre. So in the market, there are buyers and sellers. So let's go back to my NASPAS example. Let's say we've got buyers at 130 Rand and sellers at 131 Rand. Now, you want to transact. If you wish to buy, you would have to buy at 831. If you wanted to sell, you would have to sell at 830. You could elect to sell at 831 where the other sellers are. You would simply join the queue. What is a realistic capital requirement to start a CFD account? That's a brilliant question and a very, very long answer. I will give you the short version. Ideally, I would say 50 to 100,000 Rand. And I know that most of the folks in this podcast have just said, Yelza, count me out. Fair point. Um, I like 50 to 100,000. It means I can do really good risk management. Uh, it means I can take a couple of positions at any one time. Uh, can you trade lower? Of course you can. Here's the point, and Alexander Elder uses the analogy of, of an airplane. And if you're smaller trading account, is like flying a small aircraft at tree top level. It's risky. Something goes wrong, your propeller clips a branch, there's a bird strike, you haven't got wiggle room. The bigger the account, the bigger the airplane, the higher you fly. You, higher you fly. The flip side of the equation, however, is how do we really learn? Today's a learning experience, absolutely. And after this webcast, you'll go and do some digging and you'll learn some more. But true learning comes from doing. That's how we as human beings learn best. So if you've only got 15,000, is it worth doing it? It's going to be harder to trade with a smaller amount. Make no mistake about it. But you're going to learn. It's going to be harder to do proper risk management. Position sizes are going to be smaller. The point is you will be learning. That is critically important. So I would say you could probably get away with an account of maybe 10 or 15,000. It will be harder, ideally 50 to 100. But while you're building to that 50 or 100, you can still be learning. Uh, Donald, ah, Donald, I got your question. It's the one there around the, the, the Satrix. Ladies and gents, I'm not seeing any more questions coming through. Uh, so if the questions are done, we will leave it there. Um, the video will be up later today. Uh, as always, you're welcome to drop us more questions. Um, and if you go to the IG website as well, they also do very regular webcasts on, on what are CFDs and the like. Um, go to igmarkets.co.za and you will find uh, the presentations there. They also webcasts so that you can also log in and learn more about CFDs. Ladies and gents, I thank you very much for your time today. All the best. Cheers. This webinar was proudly brought to you by IG South Africa. Visit igmarkets.co.za to open your trading account today.